Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I am just delighted to be here. And uh, thanks to Nth Generation Computing for asking me. I mean, the story that, uh, that you heard is absolutely true. I was at a CIO roundtable with Jan and Rich. And uh, at the end, they had a lot of things to say about Hewlett Packard. <laughs> And not all of them were positive. And uh, they said, would you ever um, come and speak at Nth Generation? And so here I am, and I am just delighted. So you know what? We live in really exciting times. My view is this is the most exciting time to be in technology. And I bet most of you, and, and I know I've been in technology for most of my career. But the world in which we live and work is changing, and it is all propelled by IT. And together, as partners, we are managing more data, we're managing more complexity than we have ever faced before. And we are also managing speed. Everything from time to market to customer demands, everything seems to be happening so much faster than it was even just a couple of years ago. And we're managing opportunities, opportunities the likes of which our industry has never seen. So what I thought I would do today is first share the significant progress that HP has made in the last year. Second, talk to you a little bit about our strategy and our go-to-market story. And then third, I want to talk about why I think HP is unique. And then what we're going to do is go to question and answer. So start thinking about things that you would like to ask me. And really do not be shy. You have to remember I ran for public office. So <laughs> nothing hurts my feelings. <laughs> So what I'd like to do today is tell you how our focus, Hewlett Packard is focused on being the best technology partner on earth for IT professionals like you. And in the last year, we have been listening very hard. I like to say we're an owl, two ears and two eyes. And everywhere I go, what I hear is that our partners and their end customers want HP to win. First, because you have invested in HP technology over many years, and you need us to continue to bring you the solutions that help solve the toughest problems and help you succeed in an ever increasingly competitive environment. You've also told me that you deeply appreciate the benefits that you get from HP in an industry that is characterized by increasing consolidation and increasing change. You know, customers have always been at the heart of Hewlett Packard, and that is truer today than it has ever been. For many, many years, HP has helped customers manage the most complex challenges in the way that no other company can. And here's what makes us unique. We're one of the only companies left, maybe the only company, that is equally strong in devices, in infrastructure, in software and in services. From cloud to security, from big data to mobility. And we're uniquely qualified because invention and innovation are, are the core values of Hewlett Packard. They are in our DNA. And I think uh, Jan in particular will be happy to know that it turns out it's very hard to kill founder DNA. <laughs> and the, what was imbued into this company by Bill Hewlett and David Packard many years ago, despite the acquisitions, the drama at the board, all the things, the core values of this company are still very much alive. And we have always brought that innovation strength to the marketplace. And I think you'll be happy to know that we are investing more in R&D than we have in many years. And innovation is the lifeblood of who we are. But what else do you want in a technology partner? Obviously, you want to see a secure financial footing. You have to have confidence that your partner will be around tomorrow and the day after that. And I'm happy to tell you that, believe me, HP is here to stay. We are on an incredibly financial, secure financial footing. Last year, we generated $10.6 billion of free cash flow. And we are at a near net debt position of zero on the operating company. So you should feel great about the financials of HP. Next, you want a track record of success, but no resting on your laurels and no trading on last century's accomplishments. I think you also want your partners to understand what makes you successful. 
And you also want partners that have a great set of assets, a great brand, a group of very resilient employees who will work on your behalf. And finally, I think you want a partner with the ability to see what's ahead, gauge your situation, and help you navigate on your speed, on your terms. So let's look at what's ahead and how we're helping to try to helping all of you manage complexity. You know, IT remains the defining change agent of our time. And we stand at the next inflection point of this industry. And this shift is being driven by trends that you all know about because you're living it every single day. And that shift is being driven by cloud, security, big data, and mobility. The shift also changes the way technology is delivered, the way it's consumed, and the way it's paid for. Everything is in flux. In my view, this shift de demands what we call the new style of IT, which is in reality a new style of business that is powered by IT. Now, in my experience in this industry, these kinds of big tectonic plate shifts happen every, once about every 10 to 15 years. Think back from the move from the mainframe to the client-server environment, from client-server to Web 1.0, or Web 1.0 to mobile and web services. You know, I enjoyed a clear view of one of these shifts when I was at eBay. And what you know is that when one of these shifts happen, everything changes and IT becomes even more important. And in the shift that we're going through today, this new style of IT promises opportunity, such as lower cost, greater speed and agility and simplicity that allows your companies to be even more powerful in the market and outwit, outsmart, outplay, and outlast your competitors. But I'll also say it means that IT is being challenged in ways we haven't seen in some period of time. And it means a lot of new pressures on businesses like yours. Today, businesses and governments need to accelerate the pace of modernizing their applications and delivering web services. It means having the right infrastructure, the right applications, and the right services to keep pace with business and consumer demands. For instance, companies can no longer take nine months to develop version 1.0 of an application, and then another nine months for version 2.0 of that application. These things now happen, have to happen in days or weeks. Also, what I see is that size and scale are no longer barriers to market entry. Some of your competitors today, I bet, weren't even around a couple of years ago. It's true for HP. Some of our competitors were a gleam in a 26-year-old's eye four or five years ago. But this new style of IT, it spans devices, infrastructure, software, and services to deliver on the promise that your customers and your employees, frankly, expect. And IT is no longer about just keeping the computers running. It is now a critical strategic factor in determining whether your organization will win or lose in the marketplace. And interestingly enough, everyone in this room, you're no longer down in the engine room you're up on the bridge consulting with the captain about the very future of your business. And we totally get that. And HP is here to help you earn your command stripes. Now, as I said earlier, driving this huge shift is the rise in cloud, mobility, big data, and security. And you know this, you know this reality better than anyone because you live it every single day. You know about the explosion of data that the world is creating and the challenges involved in managing, storing, processing, and exploiting it. Think about this. On any given day, the world posts one billion pieces of content to Facebook, generates over 200 million tweets, and creates information using GPS, 
cameras, GPS-enabled devices, and transaction systems. And in 12 hours, we are creating as much data as the world created from the beginning of time till the year 2003. Let me say that again. In the last 12 hours, we're creating as much data as the world created from the beginning of time to 2003. I mean, thinking about the data center alone, you know that the path we're on is not sustainable in terms of space, in terms of energy, in terms of cost. For instance, large cloud and web services, there is, a, a, I think, a relatively conservative estimate that there will be a new installed base of 8 to 10 million servers in the next three years. The space that would be required for those 8 to 10 million servers will occupy the equivalent of 200 football fields. If laid end to end, these data centers would span the length of Manhattan. And to build these data centers will cost anywhere between 10 and 20 billion dollars. A little later on at the symposium, we're having a great keynote where you'll learn more about HP's industry standard server options and how they compare to some of our competitors on key issues like power consumption, space, and, uh, and speed of application. You also know how challenging it is to secure your systems and vital information in a world facing asymmetrical and relentless security threats. Since 2006, threats against the United States government, uh, the government systems alone, have risen more than 680%. Today, security is a board level agenda. I bet it is a board level agenda at all of your companies. I know it is at HP. In fact, last board meeting that we had, which was uh, just about three or four weeks ago, we spent one half day on security and how we're securing the HP infrastructure, the HP networks, because your reputation can be lost in an instant. Now, we also understand the challenges you face. And to meet the rapidly changing demands of your enterprise, you've got to increase the, increase the speed and the agility of your operations. And at the same time, with new trends like bring your own device, you're dealing with problems that are associated with enabling your employees to have access to privileged company information and application from all kinds of diverse mobile devices. And while yesterday's database administrator typically sat in a nook, probably somewhere in your office, today he or she can work from a smartphone from just about anywhere. And you know just how challenging and vital enabling that journey to the cloud can be. By 2016, research suggests that 75% of the IT environment will be deployed in either a private, a managed, or a public cloud. Can you imagine? I mean, these numbers are overwhelming, and their sheer size makes it clear just how fundamental these trends are to an organization's bottom line. And solving these challenges and using these forces to your enterprise's advantage are just table stakes in a hyper-competitive environment. You know, the foundation of this new style of IT is still being poured, and we're all defining it together. And what you'll hear about this week at the Nth Symposium is how HP is helping to provide some comprehensive solutions for this foundation. And in fact, our company strategy, in a word, is to provide solutions for the new style of IT. I'm often asked by the media, by investors, what is HP's strategy? You've got so many diverse businesses. You're an enormous company. In a word, we are pivoting the whole company around this we aim to provide solutions for this new style of IT. And the good news is, for us, I think, and for all of you, is we are the only company with the breadth and depth of innovative products and services to help you succeed in this new environment. Just take a look at our Moonshot server system, which is truly revolutionary innovation. This has been incubated in HP Labs for well over 10 years. 
And when Dave Donatelli came to HP about four years ago, he wandered over to HP Labs and he said, what do you got that's revolutionary? And they said, well, you know, we've been working on this moonshot program for 10 years. We went to commercialize that really fast. But with Moonshot, you can reduce power consumption by 89% and a footprint by 80%, and it cost 77% less than traditional servers. And just to give you an internal example of how powerful this is, we have actually moved all of HP.com, which is in the top 100 websites in the world, onto Moonshot servers. HP.com gets over 300 million hits a day, and we are now powering the entire site of HP.com worldwide, which of course is HP.jp and HP.co.uk across the globe, on the equivalent of 12 60-watt light bulbs. We have emptied our Austin data center that used to house all the services to, hold, to run HP.com. So no other company is making such strides in energy efficiency. And if you think about it, I bet most of you have more than 12 60-watt light bulbs in your house. So you'll hear more about Moonshot from Paul Santelier, who's HP's vice president of our hyperscale business, later today. And I think you will be incredibly excited about the revolution that is about to happen in servers. Now let me turn to 3PAR for a minute. I heard Jan mention 3PAR. No other company is, a st is a tackling the issue of storage like we are. We have the most modern architecture, better common features from mid-range to high-end, and unsurpassed ease of management. David Scott, HP's VP of Storage, will be on this stage tomorrow to talk about converged storage for the software-defined data center. And I think you will agree that this is another incredible innovation that you can take advantage of. And then last but not least, with our deep experience in computing, no other company better understands the balance between access and security that enterprises are grappling with in the age of mobility. With our background in printing and new innovative mobile printing solutions, no company is more capable of bridging the digital and the physical worlds. And with software like Vertica and Autonomy, you can take advantage of that massive volume that is now of data that is now available. And earlier today, I think some of you might have heard Brian Weiss, our VP of Autonomy and Big Data Analytics, and how we can bring the power of Big Data Analytics to all of you so that you can figure out what the right thing to do is. How do you go from masses of data to insight that will actually drive your business? With our cloud system offerings, we are the trusted partner and market leader in the private cloud. Approximately 1,000 customers and 40% of the Fortune 100 companies are using converged cloud solutions and services. And our professional services team is helping thousands of customers with their cloud strategy and their implementation journey. And we stand ready to help. We have a great cloud strategy and are accelerating our efforts here. If you can remember one thing about HP's cloud strategy, we are building a cloud that enterprises can rely on. No other company can provide the connective tissue for companies that are transitioning from the infrastructure they have, from the systems they have, to where they need to go. Now, this ability, I think, is what sets us apart. It's the kind of success we have spent years helping customers achieve. And HP is aligned around helping you build a better enterprise by giving you solutions for the new style of IT. Innovative hardware can stimulate creative thinking and efficiency. For instance, we're partnering with a number of customers to offer a new platform that makes managing everyday tasks easier. Centralizing and streamlining communications into a single, scalable platform has led to greater efficiencies and, most importantly, a better customer experience. Our commitment is to provide you with innovative products and services. It is stronger than ever. That is the North Star for our company. We want to help you seamlessly transform your business to this new style of IT 
so that you have incredible competitive advantages in the marketplace. Our customers are asking for this, and we're coming together with new partners for HP to, that we haven't done a lot of business with before to bring this to you. And in fact, our newest partnership is with Google, our neighbors down the street. And we just recently announced a new joint venture with Google and our wide network of channel partners to introduce a one-stop shop technology solution for small and medium-sized businesses. And we call this SMB, small and medium-sized business, IT in a box. We're combining our PCs, our printers, and our servers to Google's apps for business and their easy-to-use cloud-based communications and collaboration tools. What we hope this venture will do will help simplify small and medium-sized businesses' IT environment and reduce their operating costs, infrastructure, and network requirements while improving their workflows and workforce productivity. In short, SMB IT in a Box enables business owners to focus on what really matters, which is their business and their customers. And this breakthrough solution, I think, has the potential to change everything. We're off to a very strong start here. It is a new partnership with somewhat unlikely bedfellows in many ways, but I have to say we appreciate the technology that Google has, and they appreciate our reach and size and scale and, frankly, the HP imprimatur. And we're not done here. We're going to continue to look for ways to partner with other like-minded technology companies to give customers what they want and what they need to make IT a growth enabler. So those are just a few examples of how we're helping customers navigate the new style of IT. And we know the technology challenges that you face every day. In fact, many of them are new and evolving and frankly, I think quite daunting. And we understand that. We understand that you may go to work feeling like Clark Kent, but when you arrive on the scene, people expect Superman, don't they? We understand what you're going through. And part of our job at HP is to help you put on the red cape. And we're here to help you be that hero by delivering the technology solutions that you need to stay afloat, stay ahead, and stay on top. And we do this every single day for customers, not only here, but around the world. And it's the kind of success that we've spent years helping customers to achieve. From the innovation we're driving, to the solutions that we are offering, to the way we run our business and work with our customers, HP is aligned around making you the hero, helping you build a better enterprise and capitalize on the new style of IT. Now remember when I first came out on the stage, I said, we want to be the very best technology partner for you. Every single thing we say and we do, every server we ship, every meeting we take with one of you, every minute we spend on R&D is with that goal in mind. And I have to say, I think we've come a long way over the last 18 months. I have logged a lot of miles talking to you and, uh, and many customers just like you. I've met with 525 customers and 225 partners in the past year. And what you've told me is you need a partner, you, what you need in a partner, and you've told me how HP can be a better one. So let me just recap those conversations, because I bet all of you have had this conversation about HP one way or the other over the last 18 months to two years. The first thing I heard is that you have to have confidence in HP's future. Done. We have strengthened our financial, our financial performance. We have a healthier balance sheet and a strong cash flow. And we have stabilized our business and our organization. Second, you said you need to be able to tap into our power to innovate so that you can stay ahead. Done. We've, in we've affirmed HP's holistic commitment to innovation. We've got an impressive pipeline of products and services, and we've invested in this area. Martin Fink, 
our chief technology officer, and the director of HP Labs is gonna be here on Thursday to tell you about the future of convergence and the future of compute. Because we're not just investing for this year, next year, or the year after. We have invigorated our advanced R&D so HP is ready for trends that are going to emerge five, six, and 10 years from now. And we have our eye on those groundbreaking products and groundbreaking services. Now, the other thing you all told me was that uh, just shipping great HP technology is not gonna be enough. You want help managing technology from everywhere. You want multi-form factor and multi-OS in devices. You want a coherent, increasingly mobile enterprise system. And you're being pushed into disciplines that may be new to you everything from global cyber threat assessment to new cloud migration options. And you are increasingly important to your organization's chances of success. And there's real pressure. There's time pressure. There's price pressure. There's pressure not to miss anything. And you've told me you want help. Well done. With our focus on solutions for the new style of IT, we make your world work not as it has been in the past, but as it evolves today. Here's what we're trying to do. We scan the horizon for you. We're consultative. We're committed to an open platform, open standards philosophy. And I think we've gotten a lot better at listening. And while we have more work to do, we're making great progress. No other company can execute the way we can so consider us an asset within your own organization. It's as if our strengths are your strengths. We're happiest when you look like Superman, when you succeed at leading your organization into the future. And in the spirit of partnership, our people here at the End Symposium are your people. Come see us, ask us anything. And I think you'll hear more, about, uh, more at this event about the exciting solutions coming out of HP than you have in many years. But if you remember one thing, our objective is to provide solutions for the new style of IT, but the way we have to do that is we have to be the very best technology partner that accompanies you into the future. So I want you to challenge us, tap into us, Bring us your toughest problems, bring us your goals and your insoluble puzzles and impossible schedules, and together we will do amazing things. But we'll also do what HP has always done, and that is innovate, it's invent, it's prove our value and earn our trust. So let's go do this together. Let's create wonderful things together far into the future Let's go build a better enterprise together and let's take on the challenges of this century and capitalize on what I think is the most exciting time in technology and a chance for all of us to add incredible value to our organizations. So thank you very much. Thank you for uh, your support of HP. Thank you to Nth Generation Computing for inviting us. Thank you for being such a great and valued partner over so many years. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, now let's go to question and answer. So thank you very much. Hi, Rich Castellian. I'm here with uh, the OC local government. You know, when I have a problem with my Microsoft infrastructure, I contact my Microsoft rep. HP, I got to find which of the six reps to, to contact. Hope they, they still work there, find their contact information. If they're not there, takes me all day to find who the rep is. Have you, have you thought about changing that business model to a, maybe a human being to contact or at least a customized portal for us? Yeah. So um, I don't know exactly the business that we, that we do with you, but even if we sell you one PC, there has to be a person that you know um, who you can contact at HP. And let me cut through some of the stuff. My email address is megw at hp.com. And until we get this sorted out, contact me, and trust me, I will get it sorted out. <laughs> But, but in all seriousness, um, we should, for every customer, there ought to be A, an executive, 
a sales rep who you can call and say, here's the challenges that I'm having. And then they have a pool of an infrastructure of people they can call to help solve your problem. And somewhere along the line, over the last number of years, that broke down. There was a lot of turnover, no question about it. And so what we're now doing is we're locking down on a sales motion and an account sponsorship motion. And we are making sure that every customer knows who they should call, who is their one point of contact, who may not know everything, right? If your main point of contact sells PCs, just they may not know much about stores or serv storage or servers, but what they need to know is who to call at HP to get the answers that you need and get the help on site. So it's a journey. And I think, frankly, it's probably a couple of year journey because of the scale at which we operate. This is a $120 billion company. We have four major lines of business in 166 countries. We have about 27,000 sales executives and, of course, you know, thousands of value-added resellers who go to market with us. So you need to make sure, I need to make sure that you have someone to talk to. Now, I will also say if you are serviced by a partner, that partner needs to help you. There needs to be someone on point from that partner. Um, because often we'll sell direct, but we'll fulfill through a partner. But you have to know that 85% of our business goes through partners. So sometimes that frontline person is a partner. And uh, so it may be that you're served by a partner, in which case we've got to make sure that you've connected with your partner executive as well. So thanks for the feedback. I hear it all the time. Trust me, we're working on it. Meg W at HP.com. Thank you. Actually, I'm in, I'm in all seriousness, because you know how I manage this company? It's a little bit zoom in, zoom out. All of you know that in technology, we like customer use cases. And when I get a customer use case like this, often I'll dive deep, which is actually quite instructive for our organization, because our organization follows and, and is trying to figure out what I do and what I want done and what our leadership team does. And so if we actually dive down into a use case like this, it actually just makes us better. So really, don't hesitate to, uh, to send me you know, issues that, that we need to attack, because it will help us be a better company. It's Rich Baldwin. I've got a tough one, at least. What do you attribute the drop-off in the ISS server business that's been happening for the last two quarters? Yeah. So I think there's a lot going on in the infrastructure business. And within industry standard servers, I think about four major segments. Traditional rack and tower, blades, what I call traditional hyperscale, and then I'm putting a whole category called moonshot. What we're seeing in traditional rack and tower is the, the, the biggest growth in that business is actually in hyperscale. This is where Bing, Baidu, Tencent, Facebook are buying three and four hundred million dollars of servers at once because they are building out huge server farms where they are tuning that uh, uh, server to an application. When I grew up in technology, typically we had to make the applications comport to this, the uh, infrastructure. Now it's completely the other way around. And so when you take, for example, the Bing application, they are configuring, with our help, a server that is totally tuned for that Bing application. So the growth we're seeing is in hyperscale. And then Rack and Tower, we are seeing, I think, some transition faster than I thought to infrastructure as a service. And whether that's Amazon Web Services or HP Cloud Services or Azure or any number of others who are providing infrastructure as a service, this is taking hold faster than I had thought. So I think that's a bit what's ha happening to Rack and Tower. Blades actually is holding its own as a, uh, as a market segment. Our Blades business is up. Um, we see competition from a whole host of folks, but the Blades business because it is high performance industry standard servers, it is not moving as fast as other segments to um, industry to uh, infrastructure as a service. And then last is this new segment that I'm calling Moonshot that I think will ultimately uh, be described as the industry as high density or density optimized servers that have low power pull and low, um, low uh, d uh, footprint. And this is a whole new case study because to the extent that applications can be perfectly suited to Moonshot, or Moonshot can be perfectly suited to those applications, this is totally revolutionary. And you heard me talk about it. 89% less power, 90% less space, 77% less cost. But we're in the earliest stages of that market growth. We've got a number of POCs uh, going on across the globe. 
and we're going to see just how big we can make this segment. And it is truly a leapfrog in technology. Some of you know HP invented the x86 server. HP invented blades. We're out to invent the next big jump function in servers. So I don't know, Rich, if that answered your question, but that's what we're seeing out there. I do think in infrastructure as a service is having um, a real effect on um, you know, buying servers like you always used to buy them. Yeah. Hi, Meg. I'm Nina Buick, and I'm with um, the User Community Connect Worldwide. Uh -huh. And recently, I asked our membership to answer this question. If you could give Meg Whitman some feedback or ask her a question, what would it be? Well, we have 70,000 of HP customers worldwide. We got, a, as you can imagine, a lot of responses. But I wanted to bring a couple to your attention, if I may. If I may. One said, Meg has undoubtedly proven her leadership skills to the industry and committed to bringing up the bringing up HP's value to its customers, but need to know what actions are being taken to improve the quality of service delivery and support. Good. So um, one of the things that when I came to HP, I said, obviously we've got a turnaround on our hands. And when I approach these things, and it might be relevant to some of your organizations, I always start with what do we do well? Or what does the uh, organization instinctively know how to do? And let's do more of that. And then we can put the to-do list down of the things that we need to do. And here's the good news. In our core DNA is, in fact, customer support and customer service. It was the founding values of this company. And we will darken the skies for partners and customers when they need our help. But over the years, that focus and the measurement of quality, the measurement of delivery, I am a big believer if you do not measure it, it will not change. If you can't measure it, you can't influence it. So what we did is we actually reinstated our customer support metrics and measurement. So I see every single week, both in professional services for software, TS, technology services, and uh, enterprise services, what is the um, quality of our service delivery and customer support? And then what is the quality of the hardware we're putting into the organization, we're putting into our customers? Because the much better thing to do is find some problem with your server in the factory than find it at one of your <laughs> installations. And it is far better for the customer and it's far less costly. So we are actually measuring, monitoring this. We have a renewed commitment to this. And the good news is HP people respond to this. I mean, it's just so natural in what they know how to do. So actually, my metrics dashboard says we're getting much better at our product quality and our software quality. And the service quality is moving up. We've got more work to do. And then, of course, we rely on our partner network to deliver those services as well. So we've got to get completely aligned with the partner network around how this is an incredibly important value add of HP hardware. So we're working on it. A Lo little bit farther to go, but I think we've made a lot of progress. I know we've made a lot of progress because I see it in the metrics over the last 18 months. Great. I'll make sure to share this. I have one more, yeah, if you sure. don't mind. Sure. Um, I just happened to have this in a recent slide deck. What is the roadmap and next key steps for converged infrastructure, and will it encompass BYOD? Mm. So we are uh, all over BYOD. And let me tell you how I think about this. Um, so, and I think I'm answering your question. If I'm not, you come back to me on it. So as we go out to customers, what I see is a desire on that behalf of small to medium to large enterprises to say, how do I increase the satisfaction of my employees by increasing the devices that are allowed in my organization without losing control? mobile device management, security, et cetera. And this security threat is real. How many, OK, we have about 300,000 employees. I asked this question about three weeks ago to our IT team. How many lost laptops, tablets, phones do our employees at HP lose every year? 4,567 last year. Wow. And by the way, some of those 4,000 were really senior people. <laughs> I was not one of them. <laughs> but there, it comes close a few times. In any case, um, so the, the security risk here and then the total cost of ownership is if you go to BYOD. So our objective is to work with customers to be able to say, let's segment your workforce. There are probably people who need just a VDI solution, right? VDI is coming into its own. There are some who need our very powerful Z-series workstations. There are some employee groups who need our desktop. Who, and then there are some who need a laptop. 
Some need it Windows compatible. Some actually would do just fine with a Chromebook. Then there are some that need laptop, I mean need tablets, and some who need backwards compatibility for Windows on their tablets, some who are happy with Android. And so what we want to work with our customers on through our partners is how do you segment the workforce and get the right device to the right work group so that you lower your total cost of ownership while you wrap this together with security, manageability, and serviceability. And what can't happen is it cannot be BYOD. It has to be CYOD, where you give work groups a small number of choices to lower your overall cost of ownership. And what's very interesting, there's been some quite interesting studies that organizations who've opened up their uh, workforce to complete BYOD, you know, bring whatever you feel like bringing, okay, their employees are the happiest they have ever been, and the total cost of running this goes up by 20 to 25 percent. So you can't just let the horses out of the barn here. You've got to satisfy your customers, but you've got to do it in a way that um, makes sense. And then you've got to obviously have the back office infrastructure to handle that, which is, of course, where converged infrastructure in a more narrowly defined way comes in. Thank you so much. I Good. appreciate it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hi, my name is Daniel from Motorcycle Safety Foundation. And uh, back in the mid-90s, you were pretty instrumental in uh, helping to organize eBay, simplify it, make it clearer so that uh, eBay services could connect with buyers and sellers. And you had mentioned um, SMB IT in the box. Is that going to be another main uh, focus of HP to to give uh, a certain amount of clarity to help uh, smaller IT staffs to connect with the proper solutions? Is that going to be a strategy for you going forward? Yeah. So let me tell you, um, obviously, SMB has been a really important part of HP's heritage all the way along the line. And uh, as we deeply understood uh, the needs of small to medium-sized business, most small to medium-sized businesses are under tremendous cost pressure. They're under tremendous pressure to, to be more agile, be more simple, and catch up with what's going on in the consumer internet space. So the way this idea for SMB IT in a box was hatched, which is, OK, so what do small businesses really need? How do we make it simple? And how do we make it incredibly cost effective? And one of the things, of course, about um, Google Docs is they are much less expensive, i.e., they're not expensive at all. <laughs> and if we can combine that with servers, with, a, with printing, and with um, a, a small number of PCs or tablets that are uniquely suited for um, SMB, then this is a real value proposition. So we are, um, you know, we're, we're piloting this. We've got a number of uh, channel partners who are helping us do this. And we're, we're learning as we go. And I'm a big believer in test and iterate. What I learned at eBay is that it is very hard to come out of the box with a fully formed solution. You need your customers to help you. And so we've launched our first version of SMT, SMB IT in a box. And we're listening really hard to what changes we need to make. Do we, need, we got a request. Um, one of the biggest requests we've had is actually for a microserver. You know, and we actually just introduced a, a microserver that's about this big. We call it baby's first server. And, uh, and so we're probably going to add that as an option for SM SMB IT in a box. So what's very interesting, and, and this might be interesting for your companies, so how do you manage this huge amount of data that comes in? I think you said you had 70,000 members of your um, network. So if 70,000 people are writing in and giving you data, how do you actually sort through that? And it's the same for us. What do our call center uh, folks, how, what are they, you know, they write down what our customers say. How do we sort through all this? I'll give you another example, and then I'll tell you what the solution was. We do a voice of the workforce survey. Probably you survey your customers every year. How are they doing? Do they like working at your company? Do they recommend it as a place to do business? Well, we do that too. But at our scale, we have 200 and 300,000 roughly employees. They wrote 3 million comments. <laughs> How do we know, without reading 3 million comments, what they said? What we did is we ingested those comments into the autonomy engine. And within about 30 seconds, out came the nine themes that our employees around the world were interested in. We're now applying that to our call center uh, un, un, uh, you know, unscripted comments. So we have a better sense of what's going on. That's how we figured out about the microserver. You know, our customers weren't actually saying, could you add a microserver to this? But the write-in comments from our partners, telesales, 
groups were saying, hey, have you thought about a microserver? So those are the kinds of things we're experimenting with. And as I said, very committed to this space. We've got to figure out how we can help, uh, you know, our partners help small business and medium-sized business. So we're excited about it. Early days, but we're excited about it. So thanks for the question. Yeah. Yes. Hi, I'm Lawrence D., uh, Enterprise Architect with CareFusion. One, I want to thank HP and Enth for being a good partner. Do appreciate it and don't want all the questions up here to be <laughs> negatively focused. Listen, it's good. <laughs> My question, we have good support in, um, here in North America, but as soon as we go to Europe and start dealing with cross-border issues, we want to move a server from country to country, run into all kinds of issues. Mm. Some of your competitors don't have that issue, so, but I'm sure there's some traditional VAR and other relationships causing issues. We've heard global SKUs being in the works, but it's been a while. Yep. What's our, is that something that can be solved in the next six to 12 months, or, or what's the plan for yep. that to help us as we deal with both users and sure. date moves across border sure. in Europe? So um, what, what he's referring to is often the same product when it goes from the United States or gets shipped from one of our factories to different countries has different SKUs. And the history of that has to do with data privacy, it has to do with factories, it has to do with a whole host of things. But it's confusing for our partners because if you're trying to distribute to CareFusion in seven countries, it's a pain to have seven SKUs. Um, so I believe actually about 80% of this will be solved by the end of this year, 2013. Um, but you have to remember it's about 20, we gotta remember the 80-20 rule here. 20% of the countries account for 80% of the volume. So I'm gonna solve this for 16 countries by the end of 2013. I may not solve it for Nigeria or Costa Rica or you know, beyond, but 80% of our revenue comes from 14 countries. So I am like all over these 14 countries and how we make it easy to um, move between the 14 countries. But I'm sure if I'm here next year, you will say, Meg, I had a care fusion operation in Argentina and you have not fixed this problem. And the answer is I might not have by then because it turns out this is way more complicated. The other thing we have to make sure of is that we have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed on regulatory issues around data centers and um, what, what uh, information will be on those servers in different countries. So we have to be careful of the regulatory environment. But in the top 14 countries that account for 80% of our revenues and probably 80% of yours, end of 2013. <laughs> I'll see, I'm, I will be here next year, and they'll say, Meg, you just didn't get it to Jordan. What happened? <laughs> yes. Hey, Meg, uh, Rick Riddell with HP Networking. So I'd like to speak on behalf of some of our customers. So one of the, the regular pieces of feedback that I get is that as a, a hardware infrastructure business within EG, we do a pretty good job of being cohesive and having one face to the customer. Uh, they struggle with how the rest of our business ties in, especially software. And I think locally we've been able to bridge some of that uh, really from a personal perspective. I think some of the customers would like to hear what we're doing holistically yeah. to fold in the rest of the business into some of the core infrastructure business that we've got in the data center and in our customers' uh, infrastructure today. Yeah. So I think this is one of the biggest challenges that uh, has faced HP for a number of years, which is we had very powerful individual business units who were accountable for their own P&Ls, but didn't necessarily play together. They did not play well with others, necessarily. And I think the first thing is this has to start with a message from the top, which is we are at our best when we go to market as one HP. We are at our best when we can deliver solutions that cross individual business units. Listen, security crosses three different business units. It starts in our software business, anchored in ArcSight, Tipping Point, and Fortify, but it are also our devices need to be known as the most secure devices, and we have to have a um, security practice in our enterprise services group. Cloud. Our converged cloud offering starts with private cloud that comes out of EG. Then we have managed cloud services that is from our enterprise group. And then we have our HP cloud services business, which is at hold, holding at corporate. That's our industrial strength Amazon web services business. And then we have cloud service automation, which is the software that links it all together. And then what we call our cloud OS, which is the common operating system that links all of these cloud offerings together for hybrid delivery. So, we have to be able to run individual businesses, but work across. 
And this is hard for organizations of our size, but it does start from the top. And I have been as clear as I know how to be that we have to um, show up as one HP. Now, this takes some time as we show our face to different parts of our uh, community of users. It's easier at our biggest accounts. It is easier at our biggest partners because we can have one partner business manager who helps corral HP into a set of solutions. But as our customers get smaller and our partner gets smaller, we have to think through what is the coverage model that's going to allow us to do this. And then we have to rely on our partners to also be able to bring the strengths of HP. And I will not um, you know, sort of gloss this over. This is a journey for HP. And what you should know is we have the intention. We are organizing our selling motion around that. We're organizing our specialists and our solution uh, technologists around this. And what I know is that as we engage with a customer quite quickly, this gets into fairly deep technology, that the concierge can only get us so far. The concierge can actually bring the right resources to bear, but we have to make those resources available to our executives who want to bring HP solutions to either a partner or an end customer. So I think we're getting better at this. We deeply understand this is what we have to do. And it's going to take a little bit of time. Because what you need to know about HP is for many, many, many years, these were operated as independent, siloed businesses that to some degree competed against one, one another. And that is not going to help us be solutions for the new style of IT. We recognize that. But culturally, we've got a lot of work to do. I'll tell you a little story. When I came to HP, one of the books I read was Lou Gerstner's book when he went to IBM. You might have read it. It was called Who Says Elephants Can't Dance? And he said when he came to, H to uh, IBM, he thought that culture was important. And by the time he left IBM 10 years later, he said he thought culture was the only thing that mattered. Because people do the right thing, yes. People do the right thing. that They, they do what they're paid to do. But at HP, actually, people want to do the right thing. They need to know what the right thing to do is. And they need to understand the culture that they are um, being asked to embrace. And, uh, and so, as you know, you all probably have tried to do culture change in your organization. I think it's the hardest thing we do. And at scale, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. So we're working on it. I think we've made a lot of progress. Thanks for your comment. I think you've seen it in HP Networking. Um, but uh, this is a journey, and it is all around, yes, what we pay people to do, but it is also around the, the strategy and, and the understanding of what we're trying to do on behalf of customers. So great question. Good day, Meg. I'm John. I'm with LogicWorks, uh, one of your partners here, here in Southern California. A, p a pain point for us is navigating HP.com. Yes. It, it's hard. <laughs> I mean, it's... it's in <laughs> yep. It's incredibly hard to use. And um, I've screamed about it. I've begged, yep. I've begged for, for help. And uh, most importantly, being of Nigerian descent, I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can imagine, given my background, that I jumped into HP.com pretty early on. Not only our B2B site, which is where probably most of you buy from, but also our B2C site, which competes with Amazon and eBay and everyone else. And I wasn't happy with either of them. So um, I actually have two new leaders of those businesses. Alex Kazim, who worked with me for eight years at eBay, is running HP.com B2C. And Martin Rohde, who actually came to us from a partner, is running HP.com B2B. And we are fundamentally changing the UI. We're fundamentally changing the back office infrastructure, the architecture on which these are built, because they were built on solutions for the old style of IT. And so we are actually drinking our own champagne here. We are moving from the old style of IT to the new style of IT for both these platforms. And um, we relaunch HP.com B2C, um, I believe, in September. And you will start to see some real changes on HP.com B2B in the fourth quarter of this calendar year. So hang with us. We know it's not perfect. Um, I also, when we did this, I wanted to measure twice and cut once because I didn't want to do something that was actually going to make the problem worse as opposed to better. And I need to set this up for the long haul. The choice we all have every day is do we want to Band-Aid something or do we want to fundamentally fix the pipes? I wanted to fix the pipes. And so that's why it's taken a little bit longer because I wanted to do it right.
So I hear you, I know it's remarkably painful and um, it's gonna get better. So thank you. Good, Great. looks like you're Meg, here. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so appreciate much. It. Thank you very much. Really Thanks appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good, thank you very much.